It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Here at the Real News, we've been covering the domestic forces within the United States which oppose the Iran nuclear deal and continue to push for war with Iran. In fact, U.S. President Donald Trump began his presidency surrounding himself with hawks that oppose the Iranian nuclear deal. Well, the Iranian presidential elections are slated for May, and former President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is among those standing for election. Our next guest says that if the Trump administration retains its hardline stance on Tehran, it may end up boosting powerful cleric linked to the massacre of thousands of political prisoners. The incumbent president, Hassan Rouhani, is apparently facing an uphill battle against reactionary forces within the country. Our guest argues that a complex alliance within the Iranian deep state is seeking to unseat the current president who supported the nuclear deal with the U.S. Like the neoconservatives within the United States, the Iranian deep state alliance is also unhappy with the nuclear agreement. Joining us now to discuss the fast approaching Iranian presidential election is Mohammad Zahimi. Mohammad is professor at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles and analyst of Iran's political developments and their relations within the rest of the Middle East. He's also co founder and editor of the new website, Iran News and Middle East Reports. Professor, I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me in your program. Professor, you write in your article that the secret and semi-secret networks of military security and intelligence forces that profess to support, uh, profess support for Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, is setting itself up to decide the future president of Iran. Explain that for us. Well, in Iran, uh, like in many other countries, uh, we have forces that act behind the scenes. Uh, we never see the face of their leaders. We uh, hardly know how they operate, but the effect of what they do appears in, in various forms and uh, various forms uh, from uh, internal elections, national elections, to arrest of human rights activists, journalists, and so on. Uh, this is what I call a uh, deep state, uh, um, which is separate, sort of shadow government, uh, separate from the former Iranian uh, government and Iranian state. These forces are hardline forces, and they are usually allied with uh, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the Iranian supreme leader, although it, in the past there have been occasions when they have expressed even their unhappiness with the supreme leader. And these forces are very unhappy with what President Hassan Rouhani has done over the past uh, four years. They are not happy with the nuclear deal with uh, United States and uh, its allies because they think that Iran gave up too much and received too little. At the same time, they had a big stake in keeping the sanctions imposed on Iranian economy by the United States and its allies because that way they could control the black market and the export-import uh, of the country. Uh, it was estimated that during the uh, economic sanctions, uh, perhaps as, as high as 90% of the black market was controlled by them. Uh, and uh, the government of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the president to uh, uh, President Khatami, awarded uh, uh, companies uh, and corporations that are believed to be linked with uh, the leaders of these uh, deep state, large contracts uh, without any bedding. They have lost all of that and more, and therefore they are very unhappy about uh, what's going on in Iran. At the same time, President Rouhani has opened up the political space to some extent. There is a little, little bit more freedom. Uh, university campuses are far more active than they were four years ago. And uh, therefore, the deeper state, the radical forces behind the scene, uh, uh, feel that uh, they are losing the ground, and therefore they want to uh, replace President uh, Rouhani with somebody that uh, they can trust and uh, you know has their interests uh, uh, in heart. Uh, so that's that's what we are uh, observing as the 
uh, elections approaches on May 19th. And Professor Saimi, <laughs> you also write in your article that if the Trump administration retains its tough stance on Tehran, it may end up boosting a reactionary hardliner and powerful cl cleric linked to the massacres of thousands of political prisoners. If I understand correctly, the cleric you are referring here is to Ibrahim Raisi. Uh, we will go into who he is uh, in detail in the second segment, but for now, give us a sense of who he is and how you think he's connected to this deep state you're speaking about. Well, Ibrahim uh, Raisi currently is the custodian of Imam Reza uh, Shrine. Imam Reza Shrine is in uh, a religious city of Mashhad in northeast Iran. It has vast holdings uh, valued at tens of billions of dollars, and therefore Raisi has access to vast resources that he can use one way or another for his uh, election campaign. He has always been a hardline cleric, has always worked uh, before becoming custodian of the shrine, uh, always work with the, within the judiciary. Uh, in, in Iran, the judiciary is highly political, is not really independent as it should be, and is controlled by hardliner and in particular uh, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Uh, uh, and Raisi is uh, very uh, uh, loyal to them and has always uh, served uh, the, the, uh, the hardliners and uh, the supreme leader. Uh, his emergence on the scene was totally unexpected uh, after he was uh, appointed the custodian of the Imam Reza Shrine. Suddenly the hardline websites and uh, mass media and uh, social networks began praising him and elevating in the pub uh, eyes of the public. Uh, he also began uh, giving speeches unlike uh, before where he was completely quiet. Uh, um, began giving uh, public speeches, talking about various issues, and in particular, he even started talking about foreign policy issues. And he used those occasions to criticize uh, what was happening uh, within Iran and what was the what the Rouhani administration is doing. Therefore, people uh, started thinking that uh, he, he may be a candidate for either presidential election that uh, we will have in five weeks or at a higher and more important level uh, as a su possible successor to the supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. We know Khamenei is ill. Uh, he has said himself publicly that he probably will leave the scene in the next few years. We also know that there is a secret commission uh, or committee uh, that uh, has the task of uh, putting together a short list of possible successors to the su supreme leader in case he passes away. And it is widely believed that Raisi is uh, a member of that short list. We also know that he is supported by uh, Khamenei's son, Mushtaba Khamenei, who is also a cleric and has very uh, uh, strong connections with some of those hardline leaders that are active behind the scene and part of the deep state that I talk, talked about in my article in Iran. Therefore, he has the support of both public and behind the scene of hardliners, and therefore uh, he can be a very uh, a strong competitor uh, to President Rouhani in the upcoming uh, elections on May 19. And uh, what are some of the key differences between the coalition that supports the current president and those that oppose him? For example, you say in your article that uh, commanders of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard uh, have been fiercely attacking Rouhani in public, even accusing him of treason, and have a more hardline approach in forcing uh, and, uh, and, uh, and want to be involved in forming policy. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Of course, they, uh, the Rouhani administration, and President Rouhani and his foreign minister, Mohammad Jawad Zarif, have been advocating their relationship with Iran's neighbor and other countries in the Middle East. They have been advocating opening up a uh, 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 better relationship with the United States, if, of course, there is a willing uh, partner in the United States for that. They have been trying to expand relationship with Europe. All of this means that 
if Iran's uh, political space and relation with the West opens up, there will be more investment in Iran, there will be more competition for projects in Iran, and therefore uh, the economic interests of the hardliners and the deep state will be threatened. So they don't want that. At the same time, they have, uh, they believe that uh, Iran gave up too much and received too little in terms of nuclear uh, agreement with five plus one, whereas the majority of people think that it was a good deal because it basically, at least for now, removed the shadow of possible war with the United States from Iran. They also advocate a much tougher line uh, uh, towards Syria. We know Iran is deeply involved in Syria. And while moderates and reformists think that we should try to protect Iran's uh, national interests and in terms of national security and territorial integrity and not uh, wed uh, uh, Iran to a particular group or particular person, the hardliners are very much wedded to the fate of President Bashar al-Assad in Syria. And they have always been insisting that in any possible deal regarding the uh, future of Syria, uh, President Assad must remain in power at least for for, uh, for the short term. So there are major uh, fundamental differences between what the moderates and reformists want on the one hand and what the hardliners and their uh, uh, leaders behind the scenes, the deep estate, want on the other hand. Uh, one advocates fair relations, more moderate foreign policy, uh, more open space for uh, foreign investment. The other side wants a closer society, um, not any relation with the United States, and much tougher approach to the problems in the Middle East in which Iran is involved. And that shows in, in all aspects. The other aspect that we see is the hard line that Iranian hardliners have towards Saudi Arabia, Iran's main rival in the, in, in the region, whereas Iran Foreign Minister uh, uh, Mr. Zaif has uh, proposed several times uh, to meet with uh, Saudi foreign minister to go over some of these uh, differences uh, that has uh, ratcheted up the tension between the two sides and they are almost uh, in a state of war. So there are major differences between two sides, two fundamentally different views that the two sides hold. And uh, Professor Saimi, give us a, a rundown of who uh, the current uh, candidates are for the presidential elections coming up and what you assume uh, will be the viability of those candidates? Well, on the moderate and reformist side, they have agreed to support uh, the current president, uh, Hassan Rouhani. On the conservative side, there are multiple candidates. Uh, uh, one is Ezzatullah uh, Zarghami. Uh, he was uh, the uh, director of Voice and Visage of the Islamic Republic, which is a national network of state-run television and uh, radio network. Uh, the other one is uh, Mustafa Mir Salim. He's another conservative. Uh, he's backed by one of the uh, oldest and uh, con most conservative uh, political parties in Iran, the uh, Mo Talefe, it's called Mo Talefe or coalition. Then Ahmadinejad supporters uh, have put up uh, one of his vice president, Hamid Bagayi, who was uh, the principal vice president to Ahmadinejad in, in his second term. And then we have uh, Ibrahim Raisi, uh, the, the cleric uh, that I talked about, uh, the, the, the man that uh, had always worked in the judiciary, and many People believe that he will be the uh, final and ultimate candidate of the conservatives. We have to remember that all of these candidates and others, uh, uh, minor candidates, must be vetted by the Guardian Council, uh, which is a constitutional body that vets the candidate. And those that are disqualified cannot run, and those that are deemed qualified can run. Then in that stage, uh, for example, if conservatives have multiple candidates, probably what will happen is that some of them will uh, withdraw from the race in favor of the main candidate. And at, although at, at this point it's not clear whether Raisi will be the final candidate, uh, many pe people believe that he will be uh, precisely because he's supported by uh, the powerful uh, 
military intelligence uh, uh, forces, uh, Ayatollah Khamenei's son, uh, and other hardliners uh, that are connected uh, to the deep state behind the scene that uh, often operates in Iran. Professor Sahimi, let's continue this conversation in segment two. I'll be delighted to participate. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.